Now, while the struggle for the restoration of Chief Abiola's mandate uh, stretched, now some journalists and soldiers of democracy were on their toes and hard at work. Now, some were forced into exile, while others paid the supreme price for what they believed in. TVC News' Zona Onoye came up close and personal with one of those who saw it all as a close aide to Chief Abiola and weathered the storm of that era. Now, he was the former editor of National Concord Newspapers, now, this is the concluding part of the interview where he spoke about the man, M.K. Abiola, the June 12, 1993 election, the annulment, and the struggle for the return to democracy. Let, let me look you straight into the eyes and ask you this one question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure anyone had asked you this before, and I will hope you will answer. How did MK Abiola die? Who killed him? I would not be able to uh, say anything about that. Well, answer your questions directly here uh, in this forum. Because it's, uh, it has so many strands to it. There is not, to the best of my knowledge, not one precise, concise, so, so, so did it, so, so, so didn't do it. There were different, uh, you know, we call it a conspiracy, and conspiracy is usually multi-level. So the only thing we can say categorically here is that he did not die a natural death. Okay, well, months and years after revelations began to come up, uh, the uh, former chief security advisor to the former head of state, Major Hamza al-Mustafa, said a lot. And um, part of those revelations began to cause some squabbles, even among the Nadeko family. Did that send any extra information to you? No, 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 no. No, I must say this is a good opportunity for me to say. None of the so-called revelations of uh, Hamza al-Mustafa uh, added value to the innermost happenings of that period. I'm an information person, manager. I'm a perception manager. If I were to assess everything that the CSU to Abacha said, it was all playing to the gallery. Every time he came out, he would advertise the fact that he was coming out with a bombshell. He was going to he throw a bombshell. He was going to open the can of worms. And when the can of worms came, each time he came and you read through the whole thing, at the end of the day, you, you, you fell short. Everything will fall short. He will never name, you know, the actual thing or things that happened. He was only skirting around the periphery. Uh, Maybe because I'm an information person, I have my own tentacles and network and all that, so I could decipher a few things. Maybe to some other people who are far removed from, from happenings, his uh, stories could be revelations. But to me, there's no single revelation. As the chief security officer to, to the late head of state, it was under him that directly or indirectly that MQ Abiola uh, welfare led. So he ought ideally ought to know what exactly transpired. But he hasn't told us exactly who did this or that. He will skirt around it and then he will promise us next time he was going to do something. He hasn't up to he has not added any value. So, so as far as you're concerned, that was not, um, whatever he said wasn't credible enough to determine anything or change the course of, you know, the thoughts that no, 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 people no, in the no, struggle had at no, that time. No, 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 no. Even, even the, the, some of the things he said were uh, more like uh, attempts to draw attention to himself. That's the way I gauge it. The, the things he said about Nadeko, uh, you, which you refer to as probably capable of causing some problems within Nadeko, I do not believe in. One of those moments, uh, Major Mustafa I, was speaking, he said that he was distracted 
perhaps deliberately distracted, that if he wasn't distracted, uh, Chief Abiola would have remained Who alive. Who distracted him? When you, are, when you are, you know, making revelations, earth-shaking revelations, there are no holds bad. There should be no holds bad. Who was it that gave him an order that led to his destruction? He didn't say. Who was it? What, what were his, what, what was exactly the, the, the procedure for seeing M. Abiola? Who took people to see him? Who did his food and stuff like that? And, you know, all the attenuating circumstances are surrounding, he's supposed to know as a chief security officer. So if he wanted to actually make earth-shaking revelations, he had ample opportunities. But to date, he hasn't. He's just he's an attention seeker as far as I'm concerned. And if I see him, I, I, I'm going to tell him, that, hey, man, I'm an information person. If you really have anything, out with it. It's years now. And you are no longer a threat to anybody anyway. So out with it. Okay, now... Uh June 12th is now a national day, a right. democracy day. Uh, first of all, let me just ask you, at any point, were you seeing this day happen during the struggle? Did you at any point imagine or, you know, pr you know have a thought in your head that someday will come, Nigeria will hold on to June 12th as a remarkable date? Yes, I had. Uh, number one, um, the, day, the day that uh, Chief M.K. Abiola told me intimated me with the idea of his running. I did tell you that when I made my reservations known to him, he said Nigeria would not be the same again if he won and he didn't take office or he was disallowed from taking office. That has come to pass. And then on June 12 itself, the way the election went, it was the freest, the fairest, the most peaceful, non-violent, vi totally, absolutely violent, free election we've ever had in Nigeria. And that, to me, also signified something, something quite momentous. And I felt that was why I referred to some spiritual thing, that it was a spiritual moment for Nigeria. And don't also forget, on that day, Nigerians broke all the rules, all the myths that had been dividing Nigeria. All the centrifugal forces were dismantled on June 12. Nigerians voted across ethnic divide, across religious divide, across class divide, across age divide, and broke all the myths. There's something significant about that. It's not a fluke. So I knew all along that sooner than later, Nigerians will come back to that spiritual moment when it seems to me that God had decided to free us as a nation. And that was the day, if you look at the definition of a nation, that was the day Nigerians achieved it. June 12. That, June 12. Okay. Like I said, they broke all myths. They voted across all divides, all known human divides. Okay, and now, that's, apart from that, let me also chip in uh, this point. In 1999, when Ashiwaju Bola Metinumbu became governor of Lagos, 